Welcome to this video on ray diagrams for lenses. In this video we're going to take a look at applying some of the ideas that we came up with in the previous video that defined what an image could uh, be described as in terms of geometric optics and rays. We also looked at the different kinds of lenses um, namely converging and diverging lenses and then we also looked at the different kinds of mirrors as well. Now we saw that real and virtual images can form and so now we're going to learn a method other than using the lens or mirror equation to determine the location that an image forms and what that image looks like. So is it inverted or upright? Is it larger or smaller? So on and so forth. The first thing that we want to do here is make sure that we understand one very important thing. This lens over here that we're seeing a cross-section of is convex, right? So this is going to converge light. And what we what I have here is a kind of a zoomed in version of this. Now what's happening is light is coming in and hitting one side of the lens. And then it is bending according to Snell's law. So here's a normal line to the surface between the outside air here and the lens material. The the ray is bending it's then hitting the other side of the lens and bending again as it goes back into the air. And so the light ray is going to travel through. Now, what we do in this method is we actually shortcut having to use Snell's law to determine each angle and to measure things. And there are a series of specific rays that we can always draw relative to the setup here that we'll discuss in a second. And that will help us determine the answers to where the image forms and what it looks like. So a few quick things here to describe. The first thing is this uh, line over here is known as the principal axis. The principal axis is very important. That is almost um, what I like to call the equilibrium line where you will place the object. So you could think of it as the floor of the room, but that's not necessarily exactly what it always will be. So we have the principal axis. Here we have the focal point of this particular lens. And of course, lenses will have two focal points, one on either side, and so we have another here. Now we have the double focal length, which for mirrors, remember, was called the center of curvature of the mirror. Okay, here we have our vertical axis. That's where the lens or the mirror is placed. And what we're going to do is actually use a graph to help us construct these um, lens and mirror diagrams. So what I'm going to do here is place an object. Now traditionally what we usually would do is use an arrow as the object and we'll place the arrow somewhere. Now the different locations where I can place the object, obviously I can place the object on either side of the lens. I can place it within the focal length. I could place it on the focal point. I could place it between the focal point and the double focal point, or I could place it beyond you know, any number of focal length uh, values over. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to place this first object over here and I'm using the um, object of to be an arrow. Now, as we talked about before, every point on this object, light is shining, hitting this object, and then that light's reflecting, and the reflected light is going to hit the lens and bend in such a way that when I look into the lens, or sometimes if I look onto something else where the image is going to be projected, as we talked about in the last video, I would see an image of the object. So I'm using the arrow here so we can pick just one point on the object and that's going to allow us to determine where the object, the image is going to form. Now I'm going to get rid of these over here just so that we have more room as we get more and more lines on our drawing so that it's not too confusing. Now there's a couple different rules that we're going to follow here. The first rule is that we're going to go um, show an incident light ray and I'm going to show my incident light rays in green and my refracted light rays in yellow. 
So I'm going to show this incident light ray. It's going to start at the top here of the object and it's going to hit the lens. So I'm going to hit the, the vertical axis here and that's in between here. So I don't actually care about what's happening in here. Now I'm just going to draw this one. Now what we are going to say is that if light hits the lens when it's print, uh, parallel to the principal axis, it will refract through the focal point. So let me go ahead and show that. It's going to refract through the focal point on the other side. So what we've done here is we've used the, the already pre-planned out um, diagram to construct an incident ray and a refracted ray without having to measure any angles. Okay, and this we we can use these. You could actually measure these angles and see that they do obey uh, Snell's law. And over here we have them uh, just drawn in with um, you know without having to measure the angles. Okay, the second ray we're going to do is we're going to go from that same point on the object through the focal point and hit the lens. So I'll go ahead and I'll start with that. And actually I'm going to use my line tool again so that I can make that a straighter line. So it's going to hit the lens and probably somewhere around about there. And it's going to do the opposite of what happened before. Now it's going to come out as a parallel line to the principal axis. So it's going to look something like this. So over here, basically what we have is this is the first ray that I'm going to draw. And that is parallel with the principal axis. So you kind of have to memorize these few little steps, but it's a lot quicker than um, trying to measure angles. And the refracted ray is going to pass through the focal point. Okay. The third line you draw over here is going to go um, in through a focal point, and it's going to refract through or refract parallel to the principal axis. So you can do those uh, two incident and two refracted angles. The third one that you can do to check is you can actually go in to the center center point here. So this is where the two principal or the principal axis and this vertical axis meet. And this one, you actually would not bend. It would go continuously straight through. Uh, so, But I'm showing them in two different colors so we know which is which. Um, so we have this third one in here that hits the center center point and continues straight. This point right here where they all converge is the equivalent point to that point over there. So this is where the image is going to form. Now because it's below the principal axis, we know that the image is going to form inverted. So I'm going to sketch it in here and show that it is inverted. So here's my object. The light's reflecting from wherever the light source is off of that point on the object and refracting through the lens. I picked three uh, specific rays just so I can use to find that equivalent point over here. So what I see is that I formed a real image because it's actual light rays that have intersected. So I would be able to see this projected onto a screen. It's a real image. It's also inverted from the original object. Let me go ahead and label it this. Here is the image. And we can see that it's actually a little bit smaller. So if I count here, one, two, three, four, approximately five units, the object was tall. It's now only one, two, three, four units tall. So it's actually a smaller image than what was originally formed. Let's do another one of these. Uh, we're going to place the object in a slightly different spot this time and we'll take a look at what happens. It will go a little bit faster this time because we don't have to explain all the steps but let's try to see now what if I put the object um, over here uh, maybe we'll put it right in the middle between the two. Okay my first ray this incident ray is going to go in parallel to the principal axis 
hit the lens, and then it's going to refract through the focal point on the other side. Then we're going to have the ray go from that original point in through the focal point. And it's okay if it doesn't hit the actual lens here, because that's just a representative to show you what kind of lens this is. It's still hitting this principal axis. And it's going to remember refract parallel to the principal axis like this. Now I can already see that I'm going to have to lengthen this ray because it stretched out much further. The final one we can do, we don't have to do it, but we may as well here as we're learning this for the first time. It hits at the center and then it just continues straight through the center and we see that they all converge at that point. And so what I could do then is actually do my best to construct the image round about there. Now you can see already it's still a real image because light rays actually converge here. I could put a screen here and see this. It's still inverted, but it has become larger than it was in the previous example. So that's pretty cool. So if I, if I have an object between F and 2F, then I produce a larger image, but it's beyond 2F on this side. Whereas this original one, I had the original object beyond 2F, and it formed between F and 2F. And you can see it. This is just a flip of this picture. So it makes it a lot easier to understand. Let's do another one that's actually really cool. We're going to put the object over here on the focal point. Okay, and we're going to do our our principal lines again. So we have our first one that goes from where the object, a point on the object hits the lens. It's going to refract through this focal point over here. Okay, and now I'm supposed to go in through the focal point, but I'm on the focal point, so I can't do that. Uh, so what do I do? Well, I'm going to use the third ray that I usually draw and I'm going to make it hit the center here. And remember that ray continues straight through the center. Now, you, we see here pretty clearly these two rays are not going to intersect. And that is true. What actually occurs here is that when the object is placed on the focal point, there is no image formed because these rays will never intersect. But if you placed a light bulb, let's say, at the exact focal point of a lens, you could create this very uh, big beam of light, kind of like of a lighthouse, and you could use that beam and move it around. But you have to place the light bulb exactly on the focal point in order for that to occur. Finally, for some of you who may be thinking about it, if you place the object inside the focal length, what exactly would happen? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a very small object because I know that this is going to form a very large image and I'll show you kind of how that occurs. So our first line is going to go uh, in from the focal uh, in from the uh, point on the object parallel to the principal axis and it's going to uh, refract through the focal length on this side, okay? And now the second line is gonna be a little bit tricky here because I'm in front of the focal point. So how do I go in through the focal point if I'm already in front of it? Well, there's two options here. I can either line that point up with the top of the object. So kind of do something that looks like that. Now, obviously this portion of it that is a, you know before the object is not actually present. So we could erase that part and only focus on the point from here up to the lens. Now I know that that's actually going to refract parallel like it did in all the other examples. And I see again here, these two rays will never intersect, meaning it's not gonna form a real image. But what I can do is if I look through the lens, my eye can follow this ray and this ray and see a point where they appear to have intersected in somewhere on the side. 
if we're treating them as geometric lines. Now what I'm going to do is use a different color to trace back the refracted rays only. So I trace back this refracted ray and I'm going to trace back the ref this refracted ray over here. In fact, I need to do that a little bit better than I did. Okay, so I've traced back those two lines and what I see is that I have the corresponding point form over here. Let me change to a smaller line. I have it formed over here. Okay, now it appears that this is a bigger image than the object was. So this image is a positive magnification, right? This is like using a magnifying glass. If I place the object very close to the lens and I look through the other side along this line or this line, I see the object or the image form over on this side. It's the same orientation, so right side up, compared to the object over here but it's much larger. So my eye though has to look through the lens to trace back these two refracted rays. Otherwise, I won't be able to see it. So in other words, this image cannot be projected. It is a virtual image. Virtual images cannot be projected. Real images can be projected. This would be the example of a movie screen Right, so if you place the reel of the film at some distance away from the uh, lens of the projector, it would form a real image much larger somewhere else. Now you might be thinking, well, that's upside down. How would we watch that? Well, if you play the movie reel upside down originally, it would invert this, the uh, image that would project on the screen right side up. So take a look at those again and um, practice drawing some of your own. You can change things about the focal length and keep in mind that here we could have used the um, image um, equation for the lenses and done the exact same thing and calculated it in numeric values rather than these geometric descriptions. But this is an alternate form to understanding where images form. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at um, a diverging lens um, and see how the images will form.